touch with our last speaker, Seda SP Proctor from the SP Studio, but uh, her presentation was really interesting, like all the others. And for um, I, I'm sure that you will be able to get in touch with her through our um, online platform that has a as a specific networking uh, section. So uh, let's let's move on to the next uh, presentation, and uh, that will be a panel with uh, multiple speakers discussing about the topic of building an ecosystem for the best-in-class consumer content for all. So I won't go through all the name, and I would like to uh, welcome on stage the moderator of this panel. So we will soon be in, uh, in connection with their Zoom room. Okay, welcome all of you. And uh, who's moderating, if I may ask? Okay, good. Sarah. Cesara. Oh, Cesara. Okay, sorry. So welcome to all our speaker and uh, I let the, the stage to, to you. Thank you so much, Giovanni, um, and welcome everyone. I am Cesara Windrum with AARP Innovation Labs, where I head up our work in immersive media and spatial computing. And I am the creator and producer of Alco, the virtual reality platform that brings together the intergenerational family connection and the VR ecosystem. Alcove is also one of the top five finalists at the Aggies for the best uh, societal impact category. And we are very thrilled about that. And we're also super excited to be here today talking about building ecosystems for best in class consumer content for all. We have an amazing lineup of, of panelists, Patrick O'Shaughnessy, founder of Patched Reality, Sarah Hill, CEO of Helium and Story Up Studios, Amir Bozorgzade, CEO of Virtualib. And it was originally planned on the schedule to have along um, us today, Tom Newman, co-founder and CTO of Rendever, and also the CTO of Alcove and Alcove Playground. Unfortunately, due to reasons which might be COVID-19 related, he's not able to join us today. We wish him a fast recovery. And instead, we are joined by a guest panelist, Antoine Georgiev, independent developer at Georgia Studios and the youngest developer to have ever been published on the Aculus App Store. Together today, we will talk about partnerships and collaborations, investments, large organizations, startups, independent developers, supporting each other and expanding the ecosystem to create beautiful and meaningful experiences for the mass market. So let's go around the room quickly for a brief introduction each. Amir, do you want to start? Sorry, I had a problem there with my mute. Uh, thank you, Cesara. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on here. I am the co-founder and CEO of Virtually. We create VR brain training games that test and train your memory skills, your flexibility skills, your problem solving, and and task switching as well as your motor skills. We're all about um, improving your situation in terms of attention levels and potentially addressing cognitive illnesses, cognitive impairments and learning challenges. Thank you so much for having me on the panel. Thank you, Amir. Sarah, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I'm Sarah Hill. I'm the CEO of Helium. Helium is spelled H-E-A-L-I-U-M like healing. And we are AR and VR apps that are powered by consumer wearables. So these are little mindfulness uh, in nature workouts that are powered by your brain waves and your heart rate. It's great to be here. Thank you, Patrick. Yes, uh, hi, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me on the panel. My name is Patrick O'Shaughnessy. I'm the founder of Patched Reality. Uh, we've been doing augmented reality and VR development for the last 11 years. Uh, we mostly work for client uh, projects in a variety of industries, and uh, we also do our own IP. And there actually was a video of one of our latest experiments with the iPad Pro LiDAR um, that if you wanted to play that, um, but it's called Epic Marble. It should be, you should be looking for that. And we're actively uh, seeking beta participants if you're interested in signing up to, to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, um, 
we are uh, thrilled to be here and look forward to the panel. Oh, there it is. There's the. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's a physics game where you need to uh, choose a first uh, starting point and end point uh, to try and get your marble, and uh, it reacts to the the real world. So. And we can, uh, yeah, we can probably move on to the next panelist. I am seeing the video still playing. I don't know if that's a lag on my end. Yes, it, it, it's, it's stopped now. So you can move on. To <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, and lastly, there's me. I am representing the large organization. Um, many of you, I'm sure, are well familiar with us. AARP is a social mission nonprofit organization serving over 100 million people with more than 38 million members. Our mission is to empower people to choose how they live as they age and be everyday innovators in aging. We do so through our extensive offering of products and services, including media publications in all channels, print, web, mobile, and well now virtual and immersive. Our printed magazine is the most read in the United States. And we hope to see the same success one day for our VR and AR work. So with that, let's dive in into the first topic of today. How do large organizations, startups, and independent developers succeed in the consumer market with applications that can go beyond just fun games and bring meaningful experiences and impactful experiences to all users? Amir, do you want to take it from here? Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a tricky question when you're creating a new ecosystem from scratch. And, and, and the players and the powers that be, Oculus and HTC, they've done a wonderful job in accelerating everything and bringing together all the different creators. Um, but I do think there's an opportunity for a lot more collaboration and a collaboration between different types of organizations. Um, and I see right now, especially with the, the current uh, crisis that we're all going through, not just in North America, Europe, uh, but Asia and everywhere. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting period where I do think that um, there's an acceleration in, in uh, demand for, for virtual reality even more than ever before. But um, what I'd like to see is, is new opportunities for collaboration between, between uh, organizations, startups, and, and, uh, and, and the app stores themselves. Yeah, good point, Samir. Um, Sarah, do you want to, to take it next? And I realized uh, during the intro, we forgot um, Antoine. So let's go back through that after, after we go around. Antoine, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. OK, thanks for introducing me. Uh, my name is Antoine, and I'm an independent developer. Uh, as uh, you previously heard, I became the youngest developer that ever got the Oculus Store. This happened uh, last year in the summer, and I'm currently working on a fitness app that plans to go global, and it already has the store approval of the uh, Oculus Rift market, and hopefully, in just a couple of more months, we may even get to the Quest Store. So yes, I'm so excited to be here and looking forward to participating and sharing my insights. Thank you. And sorry for skipping you earlier. Sarah, your turn now. Time. Sure. So I think, you know, AARP has done a great job um, with making content that is palatable to a variety of different age groups. Um, you know, that's the great thing about VR and AR is that it's not just for one particular demographic. It can be used not only by mom or dad or grandma, um, but also for teenagers and younger groups as well. So, you know, I think the, the, the key in these times, um, specifically as it relates to um, stress, which is what, what we're involved in and, and how with COVID-19, we're in the Stress Olympics. And so any time that you can seek out content um, that allows you to escape your current reality, there's a therapeutic impact. So I just really applaud, um, you know, everyone who is developing ecosystems to try to help us work together because at the end of the day, we're all swimming in the deep end. 
So the more that we can lock arms, um, uh, the greater uh, the likelihood will be that not only that we'll stay afloat, but that will people people will discover our content. And you know that's one of the greatest challenges of indie developers um, is that you can have the most you know beautiful content in the world, but unless someone knows where to find you, um, uh, you, you know, that's difficult. So that's what um, AARP system does. It allows you to have a portal uh, to your brand. Thank you, Sarah. Patrick, do you want to continue? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I want to I, I echo what Sarah said. I think, um, you know, as, as independents, uh, a lot of times it's it's tough to find, you know, that avenue to, to get your work out there. Um, Antoine's been fortunate in being able to directly publish, which is great, but um, not everyone can do that. I think partnering with larger organizations uh, is, a, is a fantastic idea, and I think uh, AARP has created a nice model for that. Um, I think also um, making good relationships with the platform to the, uh, providers can also uh, serve you well as an independent. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I think I think those are all some great points that uh, all the panels have made. And I think you guys, Patrick, you've worked a lot with large organizations over the years, right? Some of the ma Absolutely. major corporations are some of your clients. Do you want to share some uh, from your experience uh, with that? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Um, recently, we've been doing a lot of uh, sort of proof of concept work for larger enterprises that want to try and figure out what the latest and greatest hardware and software can do. How do they fit that into their business? Uh, so unfortunately, we can't share a lot of that work, but we've done work with uh, large, large um, furniture brands and um, with uh, oil and gas concerns. Uh, uh, prior work, we've done a lot of work with uh, cultural institutions like the American Museum of Natural History, um, where they wanted to bring AR to a space uh, exhibit that they were doing. Um, so, you know, we get we get uh, calls from all over the all over, um, and uh, it was nice actually to link up with you, Cesare, last year at AWE. Uh, it was uh, some unfortunate uh, circumstances where there was a fire in the hotel, but uh, it was very serendipitous because we were able to take our existing um, uh, Babble Rabbit. Uh, consumer app and uh, bring it into the AARP playground. And uh, I think we'll probably be more opportunity to talk about that uh, later in the panel, but that was a fantastic opportunity and, and uh, the kind of thing that can just happen if you put yourself out there, make sure you're networking with the right people, uh, going to the right conferences um, like AWE. <laughs> yeah, which is why we're all here. Gosh, yeah. 11 here. Can you believe that, Patrick? You've been to most of them, all of them, right? Uh, all but one. I think one I had to miss because I broke my leg. Uh, I can't remember actually why I had to miss it. No, actually, I went to one with a broken leg, so I can't remember. There was one <laughs> I had to miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. I think Antoine will have a very um, interesting perspective of all on this topic. Uh, do you want to share from your experience, Antoine? Yeah, so as Patrick previously addressed the issue, getting published on the Oculus Store is a great thing, but it often doesn't happen to individuals. And it's not just my friends who have failed to get to the store, it's a lot of people who have failed to get to the store. But even if you get to the store, uh, the bigger question, which is in fact much bigger than getting published, is promoting your project. Uh, I did the tower building app, uh, back in the summer, and I managed to get it published on the Oculus Store six months after my first attempt, meaning that I always got rejected, I always had things to do, uh, things to improve, but eventually I got in. And somebody would start thinking that, okay, you're on the store, that means that you're going to go viral. No, that's not the case. Uh, promoting an app as an independent developer or even as a smaller company is much harder uh because of the limited resources that i or a small company may have and here comes the important question how do you get your work out to the people yes yeah, sometimes things will work out a lot of people will see your uh, app but not always and arp cell cough is a great opportunity to show your work to the world and that's what i'll be talking about a little bit later but the thing that I want to elaborate right now is getting published on the store as an 
independent developer. So as I said, I spent six months of continuously rejection, uh, rejecting my application, which was, uh, I think, a little bit demotivating at first place. But uh, as people say, you learn a lot from your mistakes. And after six months of trying and trying and trying, I finally managed to get my app published. Uh, well, thank you, MIT, because I spent the uh, last summer as a scholar, as a scholar uh, there. I used to do research at uh, MIT's Media Lab. I'm just happy that at the time that I was there, I managed to get my game published. And I'm so happy that my new game, which is a fitness game, will be released very soon. But as okay. I said, promoting the game is important. Yeah. Congrats again for that. And, um, you know, you might ask, how about large organizations? Um, how can we lead the change, right? Um, if you're watching this and you're on the large corporation side of things, uh, well, in our case, we are a mission first nonprofit organization, right? Um, so our challenge was kind of the opposite, but we also had challenges like with everyone else, big or small, doesn't matter. It's not going to be all easy and, and rose. We have the skill, we have the market, not so much the hands-on technology, though, which is why when we had the vision for an XR platform, we partnered right away with one of our um, developing cognitive stimulation experiences in VR for people living in, um, in senior living communities. And they are one of the first five startups to have been accepted into the AARP Hatchery Ventures portfolio. So together we've built Alcove. Um, uh, fellow panelists mentioned it several times. Let's play a quick video of it. Um, Kevin, do you want to please play Alcove Overview? Alcove is a destination, a place where up to four family members join in a virtual home that is as easily accessible to children and parents as it is to grandparents and great-grandparents. But as nothing is as it seems in virtual reality, in Alcove the art comes to life. Families can personalize the space with their own photos and videos, and each room offers gateways for further discovery. giving families the opportunity to see and experience the best entertainment, family, travel, and health and wellness XR content in one place. Yeah, so um, what's more, from day one, the vision for Alcove has been to create a platform of content that any developer or content creator, anywhere they might be in the world, could be a part of. And if you've seen my, uh, my talk on, uh, on the AWE stage last year, we talked more about this vision. Because you see, last, not, last year, it was at the level of vision. As a large nonprofit ourselves and an advocacy organization, we wanted to take an active role and inspire more creators and developers to create experiences that can resonate with people across generations. So in order to activate on this vision, we've built the Dev play Playground. Let's play that video now. The Development Playground, powered by Rendever, launched at CES 2020. And Alcove made Forbes' selection of best XR at CES. The Alcove Playground enables developers to build, integrate, and link seamlessly into the Alcove platform, giving creative teams the opportunity to invite people of all ages to discover new experiences and transport themselves into new worlds. So this takes us to the next topic. How can developers, as we saw earlier, there's all these challenges in all directions. How can new experiences with real benefits for large audiences can be created without necessarily having the toll of high budgets, 
or the high budgets of AAA video games themes, for example, right? And without having to build from scratch, deploy and promote standalone applications in app stores. Um, do we want to go back, Amir? Want to take uh, want to take this? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the the standard thing that we, we would offer each other as developers as a as a way to go forward is you need to have certain features that makes VR um, socialize. It needs to have multiplayer game systems and sort of things kind of that makes it, um, you know, engaging for long periods of time. But ultimately that's not necessarily the right advice. I mean, you need to be able to collaborate with other um, teams, other developers that complement with one another. Um, you know, in particular with the Alcove app, it's about, I believe the rise of what I would call a cluster app. You know, in VR, you're immersed into experiences. And every time you exit one of those experiences, it's not the same thing as leaving an app on a mobile device. And so I do think um, um, there needs to be more of a collaboration in the same way that when I go to the shopping mall, there's cooperative um, shopping malls where there's a lot of independent creators working together to create complementary kind of uh, ecosystems. And certainly that's what I see with Alcove. And I think it's the rise of these kind of uh, world apps um, and experiences. Yeah, Sarah? Yeah, and I, I think too, you know, your question was, you know, how do indie developers compete? And I think they compete by keeping creating. Um, you know, AR Kit and AR Core, uh, Unity's AR Foundation have enabled some great tools where you can deploy to one platform. Uh, and then quickly, you know, uh, deploy to iOS and, and Android as well. And a girl can dream maybe someday we can build for one platform and have it go iOS, Android, Oculus 5, um, Steam, you know, PlayStation. Uh, that would be phenomenal. Um, and I hope somebody, I'm sure somebody out there is probably probably building that. Uh, but the tools are, 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 are very affordable um, as far as, as indie developers. And the way you get good at it is just by continuing to create. So that would be my, my uh, best advice is create not only in VR, but in AR. Um, AR and VR are converging into one. Look at what Apple's doing. Look at what Oculus is, is doing. Um, there is not going to be a barrier, that line between AR and VR like it is now. So the more that you can become ambidextrous in whatever spatial computing platform that you're using, the better. Absolutely. And I think, Patrick, you have a really beautiful story to share that will complement exactly what Sarah just said. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I, I would echo that just just keep creating. Uh, it's the best business development you can do. I mean, you can try going through your Rolodex and call, cold calling people, but the best thing to do is just keep experimenting uh, with different things. That's how Babble Rabbit came about. Uh, we started it as just a developer uh, challenge uh, submission for a new platform called 60.ai. Um, and we just fell in love with it and just kept developing it more and more until it was released in the App Store. And uh, now it has a new home in VR. Um, and that never would have happened had we just kind of sat on our hands and looked around trying to find the next business gig. Um, we, you know, So just keep, keep creating, keep experimenting. Um, the tools, like Sarah said, like Unity, um, obviously. So uh, I don't know if you want to play that, the video that you put together, Cesar. Um, yeah, to kind of show the, the video progression. Five. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so this this was fantastic. Cesaro put this together. It shows kind of footage of Babel Rabbit in AR, um, and then uh, Babel Rabbit in the in the playground. Um, so this is this is the Babel Rabbit app that uh, you can see kind of lives in AR, runs around your world, can go behind trees, can hide, fetch, etc. And then uh, this is all built in Unity using the 6D platform, which at the end of this month actually is going away, uh, which was another serendipitous thing that Babel Rabbit can live on in VR. Uh, so this is what the playground is as a developer, what you see as the, in the playground. So we were able to reuse, I would say, probably 80 to 90% of the code we had already built for uh, Babel Rabbit, and it kind of just came right into Alco. There was, uh, it's a different, 
multiplayer networking system than what we were using. Uh, so we had to re rewrite that and we had to add some different UI because the affordances are different in VR and AR, obviously. Um, but it was actually a, a, a wonderful experience to work with the Alcove team and the Rendever team um, to, to get this uh, ported over. And this is what it looks like in the final um, uh, Alcove environment. So you've got uh, that playground, which gives you pretty much all the geometry that's in the Alcove without all the heavy um, textures, et cetera. Um, and yeah, it was it was really a wonderful development experience. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and and as we said earlier, right, we've created Playground so we can give the opportunity to any developer out there to, to come and join us in our mission to scale uh, access to amazing experiences in, uh, in XR, if you will, right? We truly believe in the cross-platform opportunity. We're probably just merely years away. Um, for sure, as Ori was saying, by the time we hit 10 years from now, the world would look extremely different, right? And um, one other great example that we have is, um, and I, I, uh, Antoine can, uh, can talk about this, is um, how we're going to evolve this, right? So we've put things in it already. We're continuing to grow. And um, Antoine is an, an, an amazing example of doing exactly that. So uh, the great game that um, he created and published in the App Store uh, will also join Alcove. And then together, we're, we're working on uh, further board games and other experiences that, uh, that can be relevant for people of all ages. Antoine? Yes, that's entirely true. I don't want to be repetitive, but what I want to point out, which is super important, is be creative and keep trying. And if you can, always collaborate with people. And as Zara said, that's what we're doing right now, actually. Uh, my game, Code Bomber, is going to be part of Alcove uh, within very few days or few weeks, but in any case, it will happen very soon. And I'm also working on a couple of board games that will join Alcov. And in fact, I have currently deployed chess. And I think uh, you can play the video right now. It would be great. Background, uh, as you can all see. And this is the chess app that I have deployed. Uh, you can play against uh, a family member, or you can play against the computer, which in this case is the VR headset. Point is that Alcove provides infinite numbers of opportunities to uh, meet people, meet with your loved ones, and interact in some great experiences. When sometimes you can't always do that. I mean, distance is a thing, but with Alcove, distance doesn't exist because the uh, app provides so many opportunities that I can't even count them, and I shouldn't because it can be counted. Uh, and it can always be improved because the playground is made uh, extremely well and it suits every single developer. I mean, people can always join and build and that's what makes the upgrade. And that's how things should be going in general. Yeah, and I mean, thank you all for referring to Alcov. Obviously, we have a great example here um, and this is how we took the lead in this. But what we want to do through this, we hope that our story and our case study inspire more people to, uh, to create and come together to collaborate and, and bring things uh, in a meaningful way that in the individually, uh, large or small, might not be able to have the same kind of success. So I realize we're approaching the top of our time. Um, so I would say in no more than just a couple of words each, um, what would you like to leave the audience with? Um, what is the main takeaway, right? How do we build and expand the ecosystem? Uh, I guess I'll go first. I'd say if you're a large company that, that has, um, uh, you know, existing user base and, and access, uh, I think uh, the AARP playground example is great. You can, you can build, think, think in terms of platforms as opposed to one-off apps so that you can uh, expand the, the, the list of independent the developers that can participate, um, and you'll get a lot more creative um, energy into your into your system. Um, so, and then if you're an independent developer, just like I said, just keep experimenting, keep building. Anyone else closing thoughts? Just be ambidextrous. Um, AR, VR, MR, 
uh, whatever your platform is, if you create for one, create for the other. And to Sarah's point, I suppose um, AR is not really, um, in terms of full fixed off uh, augmented reality is not really there yet. And it might take some years for it to become affordable and then so on. But um, web VR and web AR is a, is a fantastic uh, way to do exactly what Sarah's mentioning. Um, if anyone wants to be able to hit multiple avenues of distribution at the same time, uh, try the web VR and web AR app. What I would like to say as some final notes is that I will be very brief, be remarkable, be extraordinary, and always try to collaborate with people. That's what will, that's the biggest outcome of our talk, and I hope that everyone lives with that mind. Always try to collaborate with people because that's the best way in anything. It's not just about development, it's about growing in life and everything you can think of. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah, so I guess partnerships and collaborations are key, right? Especially in an emerging industry that we all want to scale. We, we need to come together and make it happen. So with that, this pretty much wraps up our session. And I believe we have a few minutes left. We can take it now, open it up for Q&A if there's any questions. Uh, hi, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, I, I don't see questions. Do, do you see questions on your uh, live pages? Because um, I don't think there are questions. But again, I, I completely agree what, with what you introduced. And I think there are a lot of uh, independent uh, creative developers out there that maybe are alone. <laughs> because they are not inside a big company or a big studio and they should get in touch with the ecosystem. And uh, I remember how a the, the AWE community uh, somehow uh, accepted me when I arrived uh, there for the first time. And I, by the way, I, I actually won an Oggy with an independent project. So uh, it's a community that is open to, to oh, no, it was 2013. So it, and um, Congratulations for your uh, platform. I see that uh, this alcove uh, looks really promising and uh, and uh, inclusive. So I will uh, I will try to spread the world the word uh, around because I'm in touch with a lot of uh, small groups that are isolated and they think they are alone. But there's a big community of uh, experimenters out there that that can. Um, can accept them. <laughs> that's what it. That that's 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 really it. You're not alone. We are not alone, right? And communities coming together. This is this is how we grow power and we grow this snowball into something really big and impactful. Um, whether it's going to take months or years, um, and coming together through events like this is really wonderful. But at the end of the day, it is the technology itself that's a huge enabler and will change the world as we know it uh, for the years and decades to come. And I'm sure all of you had the experience of showing augmented reality or virtual reality uh, to somebody for the first time. And we have this responsibility of, uh, of uh, uh, distributing the content almost by, by hand. And, uh, one to one, one by one. So uh, waiting for the AR, VR to become mainstream, we are, uh, we are all involved in the, in the spread of the world and dissemination of the, the results of the, of the researcher and developers and geniuses working out there. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, thank you. If anyone wants to stay in touch with us, uh, they can re they can connect with Alcove at connect at alcovevr.com. And um, folks, Sarah, Amir, Patrick, Antoine, if you want to share a contact as well, go for it. Uh, yes, you can pretty much use my email because that's the thing I check out the most. It is Antoine at mit.edu. For Helium, I... it's um, hello 
at try helium helium is spelled h-e-a-l-i-u-m hello at trihelium.com like healing if you want to reach out to past reality you can do info at patchedreality.com or go to our website patchedreality.com sign up for our newsletter and hope to see you soon to reach me you can connect to um virtually.com as our website or directly to myself amir at virtually.com thank you Thank, Thank you. you Thank you again to all of you. Thank you, Zara, for this opportunity, and, and this is a lot of fun.